Greg Kutsona, Associate Pastor at Bidwell Presbyterian Church. What's the whole story about the church moving kind of out of the church and into the El Rey? I think it comes from the sense we had that not everybody's going to come into the doors of the big old brick building of 208 West 1st Street, Bidwell Presbyterian. A part of it was just a, a desire to reach out and do something new. The whole feel of the El Rey service is completely different because people walk in to a theater that they may or may not have gone to a show the night before. And as you walk in, it's a dark theater, there's a huge projection screen behind the band, and there's loud music playing. So it's a, definitely a different feel than most churches that you normally go to. I have a really great community of people that was fostered through the last 10 or so years at Bidwell Press. Um, and a lot of those people went to the 131 and El Rey services. So it was really cool to be in a Bible study um, that had those same people in there and then go to church on Sunday mornings with those same people as well. So I really love the community feel that I got from the El Rey and the 131 services. One of the first groups that I was involved with um, was the Cripes, Joanne and Jeff Cripe. I had known them a long time ago, um, and I remember seeing them here, that they were attending here, and chatted with Joanne, and she invited me, she and Jeff invited me to join their small group and just come and check it out. And that was a wonderful first um, uh, wade into the life and vibrant depth um, and discipleship that Bidwell had to offer. So the community connection with with Bidwell and not just the 131, but the El Rey before that was was almost immediate. I mean, within within a month of, of attending that service, we were part of a small group, um, and those people are still basically our best friends to this day. We've lived life together. Uh, there's been weddings. There's been. Uh, children born, you know, we've grieved together. Uh, there's been so much that's happened. And, and as we've been here longer and longer, that community has grown. We've, we've included more and more people in that close group of friends and family. And uh, without the, the community that we've found uh, through Bidwell, I just don't know where we would be here in Chico. Those have become our best friends. It's become our community and it's what keeps us grounded here in, in Chico day in and day out. We noticed early on in our time at the El Rey that people our age were greeters and serving communion and uh, the young adults in our Bible study were just awesome, powerful believers with big hearts for the Lord and for service. So we were able to work with them to have them them be the greeters, them be the ushers, them be the ones that serve communion. And that meant for, that made for a powerful uh, experience for them. And I think for everybody at the El Rey because they were living into leadership at that point in their lives. Oh, you've come to bring peace, to be I remember earlier on um, when we started attending here, when I started attending here, um, somebody just noticed that I loved to sing and I loved to participate in worship and playing the piano and serving in that way. And um, they came alongside me and helped me grow that passion and that love into a more deep, committed service, committed form of service. and knowing how to sync up with the scripture of that day and to select songs and to um, work as a team and what is it like to engage other musicians and to engage the church in, um, in musical worship. And I have been a direct beneficiary of keychain leadership and that is so incredibly meaningful to me as I look toward my children and my friends' kids and that attend this church and just wanting the same for them.
so I took on the role of elder, I believe it was in the, in January of maybe 2016 when I took on the role of college young adult elder. And uh, a couple years later, um, maybe even only a year later, uh, we had a decision to make of whether or not we were gonna maintain our service at the El Rey or whether we were gonna look for a new location. There were a, a lot of forces in play there, but the thought of moving that very successful Sunday morning service somewhere else was a little bit scary. Man, what memories. You know, it's a little like, uh, I remember when my wife and I saw uh, Fellowship of the Ring, the Lord of the Rings movie. <clears throat> and, this, and the movie ends and she's like, what? This is the end of the movie? This can't be how the movie ends. And I feel a little bit that way, but knowing that, oh, there's so much more story to come. One of the particularly exciting things about my time at 131 was um, seeing the, the structure of the service being based solely on the shoulders of volunteers, on individuals who participated in the day-to-day -day because they were passionate about that service and the opportunity that that service would afford to reach uh, a group of individuals. And that group of individuals may have changed over the years, the locations obviously changed over the years, and the people who contributed their time freely to, um, to growing that congregation, that body, that service into something meaningful have also changed over the years. But that's been a constant. Everybody in this service simply wanted to serve. At the 131 and El Rey services, a lot of my friends and I would serve and you would see a lot of younger people serving. So we would usher, a lot of my friends were up in the worship band leading um, morning services. Uh, people would be up giving announcements, serving communion. So it was really cool to see a lot of my friends who I would go to coffee with before church or lunch with after church serving in those services. So this church is committed to um, relationship all around. Um, and it's so evident with everything that the church has offered, what we participated in. Um, it's just brought life in so many areas of my life. And I can just absolutely attest to the sincerity and the genuine nature of this church, being rooted in the gospel, rooted in grace, rooted and committed to growth um, and deep roots has really lent itself to um, growing their family. And we are a part of it, and we're so grateful for that. I feel very profoundly motivated by what this body is doing communally, how they're focusing on building each other up, and how they're focusing that relationship with each other to further the kingdom in meaningful ways. To reach the community that's been afflicted with poverty or lack of access to education or resources that is simply trying to find their means on a day-to-day -day basis, living potentially day-to-day. -day. This is a church of people that want to serve the community in that capacity and want to do so together. And I couldn't ask for a better home. You know, I think there's a, a time and a place for, for everything. Uh, and God has a plan for everything. There was a plan for uh, El Rey to serve a purpose in this community at a, at a specific time. And then we, we made a transition to the 131 and that served a huge purpose at a time and a, and a stage of this church's life. And now we're gonna be moving into that next stage. I'm really excited to see what that looks like for the life of our church, uh, for our community, and see what that does to, uh, to grow God's ministry here in Chico.